Hi guys, today we're gonna be making the one with more me know by Sincerely Jen Patterns and this is super cool to make. It's a very nice bag. It has quite a few steps for that front panel pocket, but other than that, it goes very smoothly. Like I said, this is the part that is the most um, worksome, if you can call it a way. I added a flap, that's the one change that I did. They encourage us to do our own changes to it and i didn't want to change much to the bag in the beginning i wanted to do a longer flap but then again this is such a cute and you know you work hard for that little nice edge in there in that pocket so i was like i'm not going to cover that but i still wanted a flap so i decided to do like a square flap short flap and then it evolved into this and now i'm thinking i might have just kind of rounded the edges <clears throat> but i still like it how it turned out i love how it looks in the back it looks very slick um i love that the flap conceals that back slip pocket that they added to the pattern which is pretty smart that back pocket to conceal anything like either your phone or anything but i kind of wanted to make sure there was no access to that pocket whatsoever I don't know kind of i i just wanted it to add it that way it has it's pretty much exactly as it is in the pattern the only thing i added was the flap and the slip pockets that it has in the front it has two slip pockets in there that i made higher than higher than the normal let's say i wanted them bigger because what i'm going to be putting in there is like this uh, booklets that I have and I didn't want them to kind of peek out of the pocket so kind of did it on purpose uh, but that's the only the only difference that I make is those slip pockets I think the pattern doesn't call for slip pockets inside but I added them regardless and the little flap I don't record the strap making on the um, on the video because the video as it is is very long so bear with me please and i just hope you like it i had a lot of fun and i want to say thank you to lauren and jen to allow me to do this tutorial for them so hope you guys like it bye guys see you in a bit okay so for this bag for this tutorial i'm i'm gonna start with one of my and my only the only change that I did to this bag, the only the only thing that I did different, and it is I want to add a flap. I don't want my bag to close inside with the snap button. I just want to put a little flap. I don't know how it's going to look yet, but I hope it turns out okay. So I cut a piece that is, this is one of my main panels. So I cut a piece that is roughly, let me measure it because I don't want to get wrong. It is 11 and a half inches long by seven inches tall. So it's 11 and a half, 11 and a half by seven. And what I did was like I measured, let me put here. I measure, I don't want to, okay, three and three quarters inches down from the top down and put a dot. And then from the middle, I mark my middle on the bottom and I center my ruler and I mark a five inch line. So from my middle, two and a half inches to this way, a dot two and a half inches this other way and a dot. So this dot I connected with this one and slice it. And this dot I connected with my other mark over here, which is the same as this side and cut it. So I ended up with something that looked like this. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna stitch. Before I do that, I'm gonna separate those and this is my lining this is what i choose for my lining for my flap 
And I'm just gonna make the markings for my little snap. And cut that. <clears throat> And more powder. We're going to be attaching to a flap the male portion of the snap. And again, I don't know how this is going to turn, but hopefully, it turns out good. I'm going to cut a little piece of Peltex which in my other video, I forgot the name of this, but I always keep a piece of these around. I kind of round, I cut a square, but then I kind of round up my edges just in case it just shows better underneath the lining. I don't want that because this is thick. So it will give me what I need, the stability I need on that snap, but it will, sometimes it does shows. Doesn't matter, but it sometimes it does show. So I just round it up. It doesn't need to be perfect. If you don't feel too, um, if you don't feel too good handling this kind of uh, blade, you can just do the marking, cut it first when with a bigger piece in your hands, like this being bigger, and then kind of cut it to size. But I need this to do that, so I'm gonna put that there. I'm actually going to put this piece so I don't mess up my snap. <clears throat> and I'm going to find something to flatten that out. Maybe this will help me. Yep. That's good enough for me. There's my metal piece right there. And I attach my I measure one and a quarter because I don't think I gave you that measurement, but it is pretty much yeah, my marking was from the center up one and a quarter inches. So I put this snap one and a quarter inches up. From here to here is one and a quarter. So now we're gonna stitch it in place. Gonna mark our centers. And I'm gonna stitch this at a quarter, I mean, at a half an inch. Half an inch seam allowance. Hopefully you guys can see it better. Let me see if I can give you a close up from this angle. No. Okay, well, maybe I can just pull the camera closer. There we go. I stitch about three and a half stitch length when I'm stitching. I'll go one more, I think. Yeah, one more is good. I, at the beginning, I kind of wanted to, to stitch this, like to do like a, a just a, a square flap, long, just straight flap, but I don't know. I That meant I needed to use two snaps because it was gonna end up being too long. So I just, did this at the last, this was the last thought. This angling thing was the last thought. It was not what I originally intended, but that's the good thing about sewing, right? That we can do our own thing. 
and we can change it if we want to. Just want to make sure I have those exactly what I want them. Hopefully this come out cute. We're going to trim. This pattern is really, really cute. All right, let me just make sure those corners are free of bulk. Making sure I don't go all the way to my stitching because we don't want that. We want our stitching to be good and strong here we go let's turn these up and then we're going to top stitch it i love this vinyl lauren lauren sent me this vinyl and um i decided to incorporate it in this bag for this tutorial we were encouraged on this tutorial we were encouraged to uh, make our own changes if we wanted to and also we were encouraged to use um, the print that we wanted they sent us a very very nice print it's a canvas and i love it um i'm gonna use mine i'm gonna use mine on my uh, as my lining for this bag but then i'm gonna use this is also from lauren this is a metallic vinyl that is super super nice it's soft and it's not as thick so it is very good to hand as you can see i'm just finger pressing just gonna make sure those corners are as i want them to be i'm not gonna make too much pressure on my corner i just want to make sure I can see it defined. There we go. Here's the other one. It's kind of hiding. There we go. I just wanted to make sure that shows. All right. So now we're going to top stitch, and my top stitching, I'm going to use a stitch length of five. So all my top stitching, other than the inside zipper pocket, is gonna be five. Yeah, it's gonna be the five stitch length on my machine. All right. Let's do this. picky like me everything needs to line up that's perfect One thing I'm telling always my students is like, don't worry about being fast sewing. If you're like sewing a lot of things, yes, you might want to kind of be fast, 
you don't want to be all day long sewing the same thing but it is also good going slow and at your pace and making sure everything looks nice and pretty don't rush it you're gonna become faster the more you do the same thing it's a process but the flap it's done let me see if this measures what i think it's gonna measure yeah it's about roughly about four and a half inches long yep all right so i'm gonna baste this close i'm gonna shake my bottom to see that that look good and it does here my bobbin thread kind of got caught up in there sometimes if you have these markings which i am not liking this is from my bottom feet on my vinyl i don't know if you can see them let me see if i can show them to you i just turned this thing on i hate one to help me out with those markings nice now those markings are gone all right so now i'm gonna just base this in place i'm gonna get me more markings but it's okay this is gonna be concealed on it's not gonna be showing just want to base this in place so i don't have any switching Shifting, no switching, shifting. All right. So the next thing, this is my little change to the pattern. We're going to take this piece, the piece that you have as your main that looks like this, which is the one that you're going to be attaching the pocket. It goes in the back. This is your front. It's the, This is going to be your back piece. So you're going to take that main piece with your outer fabric. And I'm going to uh, do a marking that is one and a half inches. I know my seam allowances for this pattern for this pattern are half an inch. So I'm going to mark a line that's not going to be permanent. That's going to be one and a half inches down. Hopefully this works out. All right, and we are going to put our flap. We want it to close this way, All right? So we're gonna center it. Let me mark my center because I wanna make sure this doesn't go badly. All right. And let me mark my center here as well on my flap. Don't want to press it too hard because I don't want my vinyl to be got, like marked. There we go. Just a tiny mark. And we're going to put this right in here. Marking our center. And honestly, I'm like very paranoid about this. So I want to make sure that center lines okay so I have my flap in the center and I have my center mark here so everything looks good you can use um, double-sided tape for this I know in my other video I said zipper tape and no it's not zipper tape you can use double-sided tape for this part I'm gonna be stitching now half an inch from my edge so again my seam allowance is going to be half an inch for this like that Let me see if you can see it okay i made my line one and a half inches down put my flap very center with this center line and now i'm going to stitch it at a half an inch and honestly let me just clip it in place 
to make sure it doesn't move. Just want to make sure I'm going to eyeball this. Yeah, you know what? An easier way to do this is kind of marking again because you're not going to be able to see your lines on your plate. So I'm going to kind of mark my half an inch. So I don't have to do too much eyeballing in here. I can just follow that line that I just did. Okay, here goes all or nothing. I'm gonna stitch it into place. and I'm just following that line this is going to be a long tutorial because I really don't want to mess up all right so that is stitching to place what I'm going to do now, and this is why I stitch at a quarter of an inch. Now we're going to flip this and we're going to stitch again, enclosing. We're going to flip this up and we're going to, we're supposed to stitch here again, enclosing the flap because this is going to be turning. Ooh, this is, if it turns out good, it's going to be cute. But I have half an inch here of seam allowance, right? I'm gonna cut that now. And the reason I did a half an inch is because now I have a, like a quite a big, quite a chunk. So I can manipulate it and get really close to that stitching, but not quite yet. And we're gonna be stitching this flap into place at a quarter of an inch. So it's supposed to catch that eighth of an inch that I'm leaving here. So basically I trim it down. I'm gonna erase that line that we don't need anymore, to be honest. So I kind of trim about an eighth of an inch. Now I'm gonna flip this up. And if your machine cannot take this, just use a uh, material that it is a little bit uh, thinner. I'm just again testing my waters here because this vinyl, this pink metallic is just so nice. It's a little bit thicker though when you're doing this kind of. All right, so we're gonna be stitching. I'm gonna be doing that stitch at a quarter of an inch. So the edge of my fold, it's gonna be on the edge of my foot which is my um, quarter of an inch seam. And we're gonna put this into place. I'm gonna use a five, size five by for that top stitch. backstitch at the beginning and at the end okay all right so now we're going to follow the pattern as the instructions said but this is my little hat for it and it should look like this all right all righty according to the pattern we need to get the back main which is this part that we've already worked on and we're gonna put the back pocket eight which is this piece 
that you put out of your lining. So we're gonna match. Um, what I did was kind of took my flap out of the way because for the pattern, this is basically, it doesn't exist. So we're gonna start treating these just as it is all the way. Just as it was intended to. We're gonna be stitching this at a half an inch seam allowance, I believe, yes. That's what the pattern says. I need to remove my shoe. I like sewing with no shoes on. Making sure you go slow so you can go through that curve. Just make sure you go through those curves slowly so you can do justice, justice to them. After we stitch that, we are going to trim the seam allowance along the sewn portion down to one eighth of an inch. So we're gonna trim this about one eighth, down to one eighth of an inch. So we're gonna go trimming that. going to still kind of clip my corners there because when I turn these I want it to be really nice and this kind of got stuck in here oops okay clip that let me clip this one okay so I did just a tiny bit of clipping here and a tiny bit of clipping on this side and we're gonna turn it right side out. And if you did that cutting, that trimming, and that clipping, you're supposed to have a really nice curve. I'm going to be, I kinda of like to roll my seams before I totally fold them right side out so that way they kind of fall when they need to pushing my lining a little bit inside same with this okay So Frankenstein, there we go. And you're going to top stitch around the cutout using a 1 8 seam allowance. So we're gonna top stitch all around the border with a white 1 8 seam allowance. So I'm gonna get it right here on the edge of my foot, switching to five again, back stitching. Removing clips as I go. Again, I kind of, if it, anything moves or shifts, I stop and I align and then I keep on going. And that is done. I am loving how this vinyl behaves. I really do.
All right. So that is that. So if you put the flap, you're supposed to have something that looks like this. If you didn't put the flap, you're supposed to have something that looks like this on both sides, no flap, all right? So now we're going to put the back pocket B, which is a square piece that matches your back pocket A. And you're going to be stitching it into place. Now, as you clip this, you're going to turn it. Let me switch my clips the other way. All right. So you're going to turn it this side. And you're basically going to stitch your pieces down to the sides the bottom and then to the other side a half an inch seam allowance okay we're going to be stitching that we're going to do it from this side because we don't want to be catching anything out other than our pocket here so seam allowance is going to be half an inch you're going to see me switching that stitch length all throughout the video and we're going to be getting everything out of the way okay at a quarter of an inch Moving this part out of the way. I think I want to trim down a little bit of this. I'm gonna trim it and then come back. All right, I did my trimming. Another thing that I like to do in pockets is like I have always stitch a little bit of an extra line on the bottom because you know when you put something in your pocket, sometimes you kind of push on it. So I do that extra line in all the bags that I make. So I added that. And the next instruction is to stitch, you see this part here that is detached and it's on the top, is to base that in place at a quarter of an inch. I'm gonna do a little bit less than that Just a little tuck in there. And on the other side as well. Just to keep that into place. And that's it. Then you have your back piece done. You have that slip pocket. And it's looking good so far so good this is so pretty I love it let's go to the next step all right next step is you're gonna put your back piece aside and we're gonna deal with the zipper tabs and the zipper in my case because I'm using vinyl I'm not gonna use uh, the four pieces that the pattern required the pattern requires four, uh, two pieces from for each side of the pocket if you're using fabric you put right sides together and then you stitch and then you bring those two pieces back and then you top stitch but because i'm using vinyl i don't want all that thickness in there so i'm just going to use one layer one thing that i can tell you about this pattern is like try to mark your pieces on the back for example this this has um pocket contrast a pocket contrast b so just write that down so you know instead of looking back and forth to the pieces that you need to cut out just mark those pieces so that way you know which one is which and also mark 
uh, was your top because some of them have this this is angled just slightly and you can get confused so just mark which one is your top from your pieces that way you got that done so I'm just going to be stitching this um, and center it. I'm going to be stitching this as I usually stitch it. I'm going to do it at a quarter of an inch, right sides together. And then I'll be trimming my pieces way longer than I need it to be. I always um, backstitch putting this piece on my zipper tape just because I usually cut it see the vinyl okay here you can see a little bit of the marking I take that out with um, I take that out with the heat gun I'm just gonna help myself by releasing a little bit of the pressure for my zipper foot there we go and then five there we go let me tell you something um i went back and forth in there and the vinyl took it yes it does get some marking because it's thin But the marking is now gone so I am going to trim this now to the size that's why I kind of backstitch kind of eyeball it and I trim that out so I'm gonna do exactly the same to the other side and then we'll come back I did it to my other side, so I end up with something super long, which I know I have to trim, but I'm not gonna trim it yet because I'm. the next step is to get the pocket contrast A, which is this one that looks thin. I already marked my center on it. And you're gonna place it right sides together with the exterior front pocket. So you take your exterior front pocket, which I marked my top. So we're gonna get the contrast A, piece and we're gonna align it I'm gonna mark my center here too as well <clears throat> and this bag really doesn't go that slow um, takes a little bit when you're making it the first time but as long as, I mean, after you make a few, maybe two bags, then you kind of much know the process. So the instructions are placed in right sides together. And then you're gonna sew together using a half inch of seam allowance. So we're gonna sew it together. stitch at the beginning and end and then you gotta take this away from it you're gonna be folding your contrast A away and then it says to top stitch I think I want to do a little bit of trimming in here. Not much, maybe half of that. Just half of it. To take some excess fabric out of the way. All right. So we're gonna press that away and then we're gonna top stitch that.
I'm not pulling, I'm not um, stretching my vinyl whatsoever. This is very important because some, some vinyls have some stretch on them. So if you have a very stretchy vinyl, I would say do not stress it too much. Don't pull on it. Just make sure you're pressing, but not to the extreme. Oof, I can't wait to see this done. Lord have mercy. This is so good. This just looks so good. So cute. That vinyl is so pretty. All right. So we got that. And it, stopped. it, it is top, top stitched into place. And next step is place the zipper pocket tabs attached. Okay. Place the zipper with the zipper tabs attached. Right side down with the zipper closing towards the left. So right now it's closing to the right. I'm gonna switch it to point to my left, to close to my left. And then I have marked already the center of my zipper tape. I'm gonna match that, align that with the top here. I know a lot of people use double-sided tape to put their zipper into place, but I don't do that. It's telling you to much one long edge zipper. Okay, you're gonna be stitching it at a three eighths seam. Okay, so I'm guessing you're gonna just turn this out. All right, so you're gonna be attaching these two right sides together and you're gonna stitch three eighths of an inch. Kind of forgot I was making this tutorial, but I'm back. I just switched my my zipper my foot for my zipper foot, and I'm stitching it right sides together. Sorry guys, um, but this is your fault as usual. And you can see I still haven't trimmed my tabs because now that I'm stitching it to this, now I can have a better, a better angle of how much I need, I need to trim out. Now that I'm stitching it into place, I'm just going to trim a little bit of that excess. And that's it. Now I'm gonna have a nice, There we go. Now it's trimmed and nice. So after you stitch that together, all right, so you're gonna put, you're gonna trim off half an inch of the top straight edge of one of the taller lining front pocket panels. Okay, from your lining front pocket panels, you're gonna have two pieces that are taller. You're gonna have three pieces from your lining. Two of them are the same size and they are definitely taller than the other one. So you have three, one that's smaller, about, if I've made so, about an inch smaller. So that's not the piece that you need right now. You need the two taller pieces. You're gonna take one. You're gonna take one and you're gonna trim half an inch of the top straight edge. Again, make sure you mark which is your top. And you know, just mark where your top is. That's the part that you need to trim out. Okay, so I'm gonna trim that. Okay, I trimmed my piece. So now you're supposed to have the piece that you attach your zipper to. And then you're gonna get that piece, one of the lining front pocket panels that are taller. One of those, you trim half an inch from the top and then you're gonna line it up right sides together with this. And you're gonna be sewing on top of this 
again just over that stitching that you already did I'm gonna stitch it from that side so you can see we're lining this up We're going to be stitching right over it again, over that 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. Just going to remove my zipper pull out of the way and then you're going to turn it And what you're going to do is you're going to top stitch this down. So just if you're using fabric, you can press this with your iron. But I'm just finger pressing it. Just so. And then I'm pulling this down because I want to match my lining on the back. I'm gonna put some clippers in, some clips in here on the bottom. It might seem like I'm pulling kind of hard, but I am not. I'm just accommodating my fabric, my vinyl, so it lays nicely. If you again, if you're using fabric, regular fabric, you should be able to do some good pressing with your iron. But this is basically where we are at. Okay. So now we're gonna top stitch this edge in here. And we're gonna go to the next step. All right, so we're gonna top stitch this now that I switched my foot to my regular one. Get my zipper out of the way. My zipper pull. There we go. It's looking good. is looking like that and like this on the other side next step is we're going to step 11 on the booklet place pocket contrast B which will be the same size as this piece but wider that's your contrast B and again we're gonna do some clipping to mark our centers if you can mark your centers before, again, just do it. It's just I'm kind of like, a, for me, it's usually an afterthought. Afterthought. <laughs> okay, so you're gonna get your contrast B right sides together with the exterior front pocket. So that means you're gonna be clipping this to your zipper. Your super tape. And I can see that my zipper top over here, that's one thing that you need to make sure it is straight, it is not wobbly. 
like in my case here I could tell I could tell I'm going to clip it into place and you're going to stitch it it says to stitch a 3 8 of an inch again so that means I need to switch my foot again but right now I'm not going to do that because I think I'm going to stitch again so instead of doing that stitch at 3 8 and then again stitching on top of it because this is vinyl I'm just going to baste this into place and I'll do my stitching when I need to attach the next piece. That's what we're gonna do. That's how we're gonna roll with this. So we're just gonna base this piece into place. That's all we're doing now. piece place the remaining taller lining from pocket so the piece that was looking <clears throat> exactly like the one that you just cut you're going to place it and if you're confused just get you know you're supposed to get have two left so if you're confused just get the one that's taller which is this one in my case and if you forgot to mark your top and your bottom like your top piece from that just make sure the piece that measures the less, the shorter, the shorter piece is your top. So this is my top. It's very slight, the difference in the size, but your top, it's, it's, your top is smaller than your bottom. Your bottom is, it's in a little bit of an angle. All right, so that remaining tall piece, it's gonna be right sides together with these because when you turn up your, your contrast B and you open your pocket, your zipper pocket, that's what you're gonna be looking at, All right? So we're gonna be stitching this into place, matching our centers at 3 eighths of an inch if your machine allows. Let's just use those zipper foot, okay? Give them some use. I'm gonna be switching mine. Okay, we're back. We're gonna be stitching at 3 eighths of an inch. Getting my zipper pull out of the way. Definitely, if you have a Yuki 1181 like I do, you can definitely, you don't have to switch your foot. You're just gonna be stitching maybe at a quarter of an inch is instead of three eighths and it should be fine. You just maybe end up with a bigger piece. Oof, that looks good, that looks so good. Sorry, sorry for the excitement. Um, you're probably gonna end up with the wider, you're gonna end up looking, uh, seeing more of your zipper tape over here. So you're gonna end up with maybe a wider piece, but then if you might have to trim just a little bit at the end to make everything match. But other than that, you should be fine. It should not be a big deal. I just like switching my, my zipper, my regular foot for my zipper foot, cause I like that closeness on the teeth. I just like that but it's all good so once you have that done we're gonna mark 
one and a quarter inch down from the center to that's where our snap it's gonna be so we're gonna do that now let's see basically my new telephone piece okay but before I do that let me see if I gotta do the top stitching no usually I do my top stitching right after but in this case you do not want to do your top stitching on this yet Okay, I'm gonna be, please, this, uh, excuse my bird. And we're gonna be putting, oh, by the way, the similar ones with zipper do not to see at this time. Okay, so let me get my snap and come back. Got my snap, I made, I made a marking one and a quarter inch down. Made my markings with my snap. I'm gonna be inserting the male part of my snap in here. I already cut my little piece of felt tex to give it a little bit of more reinforcement. Mousy. <clears throat> Sorry guys, but he's in the cage. I haven't let him out yet. So he is just ranting about not being out. All right, so I have that piece, which are the next instructions. <clears throat> Base the sides of the exterior front pocket. Okay, it tells you that, and then it tells you to baste these together, the bottom. I'm gonna base from the lower edge. <coughs> Basting all of these together. so good okay so the remaining which is this again one is the top this one kind of got wrinkled in here I didn't iron it so I'm just going to find out which one is my top and which one is my bottom the bottom is bigger remember this is my top. So basically we're gonna match this. And we're gonna stitch it together with our contrast B. The piece that we just put the magnet on, the closure, that's the piece that we're gonna match right sides together. And we're gonna stitch it in place, but before I'm gonna switch my zipper foot. All right, so once you have them right sides together, you're gonna be stitching at a half an inch seam allowance again. Careful when you go to the area that has your snap on. And now you're gonna press that seam allowance, you're gonna press it towards your contrast B. So basically, you're gonna end up having something that looks like this 
you're going to be pressing your seams are going to go towards your contrast towards the piece that has the snap so you're going to feel that you have that bump in there and you're going to top stitch on that bump all the way Again, be careful when you go around that snap. Once you have that, it's supposed to look like this. You still haven't top stitched the part that's your um, that has your zipper. You see, this is not top stitched yet. Now the fun part begins. After you have that piece, you're gonna take this part and you're gonna fold it like that. Hi right, guys, I did make a mistake. Apologize for that. But once you have these pieces looking like this, and this is not top stitch, you, you have your snap, but this is not done. This top, sti top stitching is not done. You do not bring this down like that. You bring this two right sides together. You bring it over here. All right, you bring it over here you stitch half an inch and then you trim to one eighth and then you take this and you turn it right side out it's going to be like a little tube so you bring that right side out and you're going to end up with something that looks like this and then you do the top stitching over here and over here so these becomes something that looks like this right sides together you know it's like this finish so you you would you want a finished edge over here so you all the steps are okay until you get to this part that you do not bring this back you don't bring this back you bring it forward on top okay and then you stitch, trim, turn it right side out, and then you stitch here and you stitch here. All right, so once we correct our mistake here, the mistake that I made, I took my pieces, put them right sides together, stitch them, trim to one eighth of an inch, right there, all the way in the border, turn it right side out so if you make the mistake again it's not the end of the world just unstitch that bottom that i stitched up at the beginning or if you did stitch it and even if you trim it if you make the mistake and then you trim it just the pocket will fall a little bit shorter like instead of having the pocket all the way to here you might have a lower pocket not a big deal. So just on stitch, put it right sides together. Stitch again, maybe at a quarter of an inch. Don't do the half an inch seam allowance. And then turn it right side out and then you have a finished edge like that. And then the next step is to position these on the exterior main. Let me get my exterior main piece, which is right here. And you're gonna position this on top. Two and a half inches up from the border. So what I'm gonna do, because I don't like using tape or anything like that, I'm just gonna mark a line. That's two and a half. From the bottom. This actually is a two and a half. Two and a half inch ruler. 
so it's perfect i'm just gonna edge oops i'm gonna mark my line there and i'm gonna position my piece on that line like so and I'm going to put some clips and let me make sure I have this completely to my edge and completely to my edge over here that looks good All right, and now we're gonna stitch this into place, making sure <clears throat> that this is on that straight line that I did. You can put double-sided tape. I'm just using that line as a guide, <clears throat> making sure I don't move my I don't move my piece. There we go. So you should have something that looks like that. Stitch on the back and I'm guessing I'm going to, not guessing, I'm going to baste the sides because I don't want this to move. Okay, so we're gonna baste, now that you have that bottom stitch into place, we're gonna baste on the sides at a quarter of an inch. You're gonna notice that your edges on the top are a little bit, you see the edge of your pocket, it's a bit bigger, just a tiny bit bigger than the, the side panel, the front panel, but that is okay. What I'm going to do, it's line it up no matter what i'm going to line it up and it's going to leave a little bit of a if it's going to feel like it's bubbled up but that's going to work at the end that's going to work at the end but when you turn your bag it's going to make it lay flat or flatter <clears throat> sometimes with vinyl it still doesn't work that way because vinyl sometimes just doesn't behave but that's the purpose of that don't think that you need to trim or anything just match it on the side even if you end up with like a bubble like this just make sure you match it on the side at a quarter of an inch you're going to be stitching You're gonna be stitching that. I have a little bit of an, an unevenness over here, but I think that that's fine. That's gonna be covered on the seam. So basically you have your pocket right there. There we go. Okay, gotta mention that before 
you attach this and baste it make sure that you have put your female part of the snap on your main panel in your main panel you got the in the instructions it says that you need to put your mark for your snap nine inches from the bottom up that's your center nine inches from the bottom up you put your snap mark and then you you apply your snap your male your female piece so once you have that attached to the main panel then you do your you you baste it in place so you have that done but now i want to attach my do you remember the flap that we did and we attach a snap in the flap right on at the beginning so now I need to attach the female piece of that snap onto my front panel as well. And that one I make in my notes. I need it down from the top down, from the top piece down. It's going to be one and three quarters of an inch. Yep. So it's going to be one and three quarters down so i'm going to mark that i'm going to put my snap in there and then we'll come back all right my snap it's in place and my other one is in place and i kind of unstitch here to make space to put my label because my label at the beginning the first bag that i made my label was up here because i didn't have the flap so i kind of didn't remember that you know doing the hack kind of it passed me by that i needed to uh, reposition the flap i mean the label so but not biggie i just opened up here and made my way and i was able to put my label but this is stuff that you need to know so that way you plan ahead and make sure you put your label where you want to be. I'm gonna again, close my basting in here. And that's it. We can continue with the pattern. Everything is set. So the next step is attaching this top from main panel to the back main panel. Right sides together, we're gonna clip. We're gonna clip this in place. Matching our sides. And we're gonna be stitching this on the sides at a core at a half an inch seam allowance. All our seam allowances are half an inch unless otherwise stated. So we're gonna clip our sides, clip our bottom. Let's do our sides first. Again, seam allowance is quarter of an inch. I mean, half an inch. stitching at the sides that are the thickest and I am actually going to 
again because that's where the th most thick part is i'm just gonna go really close to that seam to that first stitching and i'm gonna just stitch again right there just to give it a little bit of reinforce then we're gonna do it on the other side i am amazed honestly but i haven't run out of bobbing I'm calling it. I am calling it, am I? All right. I'm gonna do it again. Stitch in here where my thickness is. our bottom I'm not gonna clip it looks like it's very very even you can with this pattern you can stitch, ah, didn't I set about the bobbin? Okay, let me put a new bobbin and we'll come back. Okay, switch my bobbin. I was saying with this pattern, if you want, you can stitch the bottom first, which I thought I was gonna do it, but then I kind of forgot. But you can stitch the bottom first and then open it up. Do like open the, the seams. And do a top stitching on each side and it will look so cute on the bottom. I didn't do it here, but you could do it definitely. And then after you do that, then you stitch the sides and it would be nice. So then we're gonna stitch our sides here. We're just going to get that and we're just gonna, you see that square that we did there? So we're gonna meet our stitches, we're gonna meet them. There we go. Open up, I like opening up the, the seam. Some people do what they call nesting, which is one, one seam allowance go one way and the other seam allowance go the other way. But in this case, I'm just gonna open it And I'm gonna mash that as best as I can. Especially if you use thick vinyl, it helps a lot stitching that side open. I'm just gonna go this way. And you're gonna stitch at a half. Actually this way it looks better. But I'm basically stitching straight. And I'll show you. You wanna go, I'm sorry, if you can see my husky around. He's not allowed to be here, but somehow he got in. Okay, so basically you're gonna make sure you're gonna stitch, not from the beginning, to see that this is narrower than this, you're gonna go at a half an inch from the very edge to the very edge on a diagonal. And then you're gonna do exactly the same thing on the other side, on this side. Let's do that.
back stitching at the beginning and at the end and yeah that that you hear is my husky's legs apologize for that okay behave guys so i'm gonna trim this gonna turn it to see where are we right now I'm gonna turn it because anyway I do stitch my vinyl my um, my lining I put my my outside I put it inside my lining I don't do it the other way the other way around okay so Basically, this is almost done, almost. Oh, this is my pocket. I was like, what is that flap going somewhere there? Oh my goodness, this is gonna look so cute. Okay. So, you see? How is this looking now? I'm still not, you know, I might do other adjustments to this bag. I might not, but so far, so good. Just a little bit of shaping. But she's going to look cute. She's going to be a cutie. I'm going to move on to the connectors. To my side connectors. And this one's, I'm just applying double-sided tape. The pieces will then, the raw edges will meet in the center. Again, if you're using, I'm using a one inch side ring. But if you're using something that's wide, wider or you're gonna might need to cut your connector pieces according to the size of your D-ring or your side connector. All right. So we're gonna do the same to this one. Meeting on the middle. There we go. I'm gonna top stitch this. stitch we're going to put this through it we're going to take our bag We're going to position these leaving half an inch outside. So basically, you're going to connect this. Right here. Leaving about half an inch out. I'm going to stitch it and then I'm going to let you know. And I'm going to center it. 
just gonna baste it into place. I'm gonna take my flap away this way. I'm gonna baste this actually. So it doesn't move. Once I have it where I want it, I'm gonna make sure it's half an inch out, base it into place, and that's it. Here we go. It's right on the middle, and it's half an inch above. I'm gonna do that to the other side and then we're gonna move on to our next step. All right, once that is done, the connectors are done, you're gonna take one of your main panel lining pieces and one of your zipper pocket pieces, your inside zipper pocket pieces. And I folded it, I, I think you can tell there's a line in there. It's a fold, I folded it in half. This is my top and I folded my pocket in half as well. So I'm just gonna center these. The instructions tell you to put your pocket, this edge, the edge of your pocket piece, two inches down. <coughs> but that is because most likely, or I think, it is because um, on the original pattern, you have a snap closure on this side. So you gotta go a little bit lower for the zipper pocket. But because we're not putting a snap in there, I'm just gonna do mine a little higher, just a tiny bit higher. Like, not much, like a one inch and three quarters. Yeah, and then I'm gonna use this ruler that I have for, it's a template for zipper pockets. I got this from mormino.com from Miss Lauren. Isn't it cute? It's my favorite. Well, it's not my, it's my, it, you're my favorite now. It's just that I like them all. She has so many different, um, finishes so i'm just centering this ruler the edge with the edge of the ruler with the edge of my piece and so you can see better we can do this afterwards but that's my pocket piece i'm going to center this in here just the edge with the edge right there and i'm just going to mark my piece now i am there's a lot of people that do just two lines and that's okay if you like me and you do the whole box that's okay as well whatever you think it's best for you that's the way you gotta go um so I'm gonna do again, I'm gonna mark my one and three quarters, which is what I'm gonna use. But again, the pattern states that you need to go down. That edge needs to go down two inches from the top edge. So I got that there. I'm gonna put some of these to make sure it doesn't shift until I get there, just until. Yeah. 
and I'm gonna do a stitching right above that box. And honestly, my stitching, I do it very small. It's a two and a half, two and a half stitch length. Just gonna go. And I do stitch around the whole box, like I said. Going slow when I'm approaching my corner because I don't want to get past that line that I just drew. Okay, so now we're going to cut through that box. If you want to mark like a center line, I kind of eyeball my marking. You can use a ruler to be right in the center. But I just mark my triangles here and just roughly go in the center. Make a snip right in the middle. And then I cut in the center and then I go right to that corner, not quite on the stitch, but all the way to the stitch. All the way to that corner stitch. You don't want to cut your thread, but you want to get really close to it. So you're gonna end up with a hole right there. And you're gonna pass these. So they end up being wrong sides together. Make sure that they're facing each other, right side with right side. This is the wrong side of the, of the zipper pocket. So right side with right sides, put it on top, make the box, sew the box, cut the box, and now we're gonna turn it. So I'm gonna turn it and press it and then we'll come back. Press my piece so you should have something that looks like this in the front. And like this in the back. So you have your box. So now we are going to put the zipper on. For this part, if you feel more comfortable putting a piece of double-sided tape on this side and double-sided tape on this edge, like top and bottom, you can do it. I hold my zipper in my hand. I make sure I position it straight. I'm more picky about the beginning after I have that set up, I can kind of reposition it as I want once it's already in. So I'm making sure that my beginning looks very straight. I'm not even paying attention to this side over here. This side, I'm not paying attention. I'm paying attention to my beginning right here, this part. And if this looks good, Put my needle down. Make sure I have my top stitching length. For the zipper, I like to use four and a half stitch length. 
so once I like that then I I fix it like halfway I'm pressing it down I'm gonna go straight on that edge and once I get there move my zipper out of the way and I keep making sure that my now I kind of fix my other half with my hands I had that done, not moving my hand out of the way, making sure I'm pressing down that. And once I'm getting to the corner, I go by hand because I don't want to pass too much. When you are like a little bit of a control freak. Is that how you say it? control freak? I don't know. But I'm going to go super slow in here. Again by hand. It's going there what I want it. I know my, my edge is straight. Still holding it. out of the way I know I started with the straight edge so I'm not worried about that a little what I want it if I'm super picky about it and if the bag wouldn't be with to, for me which this one is going to be for me I will not back stitch in this step I will go one more stitch and meet my beginning and then pull the threads to the back but because this bag is for me, it's not for selling or anything like that, I'm just gonna go and backstitch. And it's no big deal. Especially when I'm like, I'm gonna pull the threads to the back actually. Um, especially when, um, What was I saying again? Yeah, that happens also when you are when you're getting older. You forget. But especially if I'm using contrasting thread. If I'm using contrasting thread, forget it. I will not backstitch if I'm selling the item. I'm gonna just Burn those. That one didn't want to burn for some reason. Yeah. All right. So that's how you end up with a zipper pocket. And besides, you see that my little top kind of covers that back stitching. So not bad. Not bad at all. Now we're just going to. Wait, I just have you. Let me fix you. There. We're gonna get the other piece. Put it in. Put it on top, and we're gonna stitch all the way around, making sure we don't stitch the main lining panel to the pocket I'm just going to flip it I actually always I don't know why I always start from the top and on this top I usually get really close to where the zipper tape is and I'm going to leave my zipper open my bottom of this pocket I'm going to leave it open then we're going to go close I'm going to go back in there and here 
I'm just gonna fold this a little bit. I did almost an inch. And then I'm going to stitch this side. The reason I'm leaving that, that, that bottom open is because I want to turn my back through that pocket, my lining. And you'll see what I mean. And four there. And then I'm going to trim the excess. On each side, not on the bottom, on each side. All right. And these, it's good because once you fold it, you open it okay so it's folded like that right so when you open it you have a clean neat border so when you're going to close the bag when you're going to close that separate pocket it's easier all right so that's your zipper pocket panel done. Once you're done with the zipper pocket on the lining, you're gonna do your um, slip pocket. This bag, I don't think it has a slip pocket. It's just have a zipper pocket. But I'm gonna add, let's count this the second thing that I'm gonna do the front, just because I want to add a, a slip pocket to the bag. So I just have this piece left um, from the canvas that Lauren sent me, and I so love it. So basically, I'm going to do, I fold it. I got, I make sure I had a straight, super straight edge, and I fold it half an inch, and fold it again half an inch, and now I'm gonna top stitch that. I'm gonna do the first, Top stitching at an eighth of an inch. And I don't know if you've noticed, I lost the clip. Oh, it went too far. Can't catch it. Okay, I don't know if you noticed, but I always do my top stitching. Uh, I always try the best I can to do my top stitching in, like right side up. I, when I learned to sew, I don't know why, but I always thought, you know, like, I even believe my teacher did mention it one time, that the pretty stitching goes on the top. And I always um, say the pretty stitching is the, the stitching that comes from the thread up is the pretty stitching and the, the stitching that comes from the bobbin is the ba the ugly stitching. I have a pretty stitching and an ugly stitching. So anyway, that kind of got embedded in me and you will not see me top stitching this this way, just so I can see what I'm stitching. No, I know I can feel it and I know that measurement is half an inch. So I'm, I'm gonna make sure, I'm gonna catch that but I'm gonna stitch it from the top. Top stitch always from the top. That's the way I do it. That's the way I learn how to do it. Okay, so my second line of stitching is gonna be my stitching, my previous stitching is gonna be my guide line. And that, that first row of stitching was at the very edge of my slipper, I'm of my foot, of my machine foot. So now I have two lines 
of stitching and I know it's catch all the way my fold all right so after I had that done I'm gonna put make sure this is my top this is my bottom so I had this line folded I know it's not even but it's even like I measure this measures about nine inches long and this side measures almost nine inches long so I know this fold here is pretty even and I know I want my piece about I don't want it all the way down why because there's going to be some stitching done down here and I know my seam allowances are half an inch so I'm going to put this up enough to give me that much of a seam allowance so maybe i'm going to put these um three quarters of an inch higher let us double check yeah exactly three quarters of an inch and again this is going to be catch on my seam allowance so i'm not worrying about that discrepancy there but again it's better if you have let me see that this is straight there and let me put this one three quarters of an inch there we go Okay, I'm just going to move this piece a little bit this way. Just tiny bit this way because I know from there. Yeah, okay. Now for sure I know these two are going to get catched on my seam allowance. Same as the bottom. You see that this, um, as, as the top, you see that this is kind of wonky there. I know it's all the way. An inch and five eighths. No, an inch and, and one, two, three. An inch and three eighths from the border. So this pocket, it's going to be kind of tall. I know my seam. Yeah. But I really want a deep pocket with this bag. So that's what I can still take it out, like do another fold and lower my pocket. But I want it like this. This is going to be my bag. Okay. So now I know it's straight. I'm going to stitch it right on that edge. A one eighth of an inch. For all of these, you can use double sided tape if you want. Again. I rely a lot on my in my on my fingers on my hands, so it usually comes comes out pretty well. Now what I want to do is again just know I have all that extra there, but I love that extra because it gives me it gives me something to hold on to to get a close cut to my stitching. If you have this very close to your stitching, then it's kind of hard. Ooh, I can do like a wristlet with this. Okay. Then you're going to put it back. And then you're going to do another stitching because now you're going to conceal that raw edge in there. So we're going to do another row of stitching. okay so now we are going to do a fold but before that fold i'm gonna 
make sure this is basted on the side. I'm basting it to the sides because I want to do a center stitch to make these two pockets instead of one. can see my stitching I always start from the bottom letting that line guide me finish right here on my stitch line move one stitch ahead coming back down using that line as a guide there we go so now i have two pockets instead of one you can do this you can put just Two lines very close to each other very very close to each other and then open them over here as uh, on a B but I usually just do them I space them out and then I put a, a little uh, rivet in there just to give that extra because I don't like to cut through the stitching so I do space that I do kind of space my stitching so that way I can do the hole in the middle right there gonna put a rivet which I haven't I don't know where they are so I'm gonna find them and come back all right this bag is almost done it is almost done I promise we're gonna get our two lining main panel pieces one with zipper pocket and one with slip pocket we're gonna put it right sides together we're gonna be stitching these on the sides and on the bottom, we're gonna, I'm gonna leave, I'm gonna stitch maybe one inch from each side. That's all I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do that very quickly and then we'll come back. I did my side stitching. I stitched here one inch and one inch. The only reason I didn't leave it on stitch to turn my back through there is because I wanna have my, ed my, my corners box before so we're gonna do exactly the same thing that we did with the exterior piece we're gonna do it with the lining we're gonna do that and we're gonna come back I box my corners on my lining and I put my bag inside and I clip the edges I match my side seams and as you can see I leave a hole here so I'm gonna be pulling my back through there I know there's people that just get the lining inside the outer and then they turn the whole thing out that's fine as well that's okay but this is the way I do it I like it because this is my way of not messing up much my bag so I kind of, it's easier for me to kind of pull my, my outer back from there without messing it that much. So I'm gonna stitch this all the way around now and then we're gonna be turning it. The stitching over here is gonna be at a half an inch as well. Remember that the seam allowances for this bag are half an inch. So that's how we're gonna be stitching this half an inch. We're going to stitch this around very quickly and then come back. All right, so we're going to be cutting, I'm going to be cutting the excess right here 
I'm sorry. That's my husky again. Wait a second. All right. <laughs> I just trim on the edges over here. I didn't trim on the side from my strap connectors, but I trim everything else. So now we're gonna turn this, we're gonna turn this baby out, okay? All right, so this is her already turned out. I really like the flap. Um, I like the fact that when you open the flap, you have that back pocket there kind of hidden. I still need to top stitch, which we're gonna do now. Top stitching is done. Now we're gonna get that pocket that we left open. We're gonna take it out and we're gonna take our open lining and we're gonna pass it through that pocket. We're gonna pull it through until we get all that lining opening to the outside. And we're just, we're just gonna stitch it into place. Just gonna snip in here to make my life easier. To reach to that. I'm just gonna be stitching this close. I'm also gonna snip in here to make my life easier at the end as well. Back stitch at the beginning and at the end. We're gonna put this back inside through the pocket. And the last thing that we need to do is close that pocket. Now again, this is gonna be for me. I tend to kind of squish my bags to get the air out. And I usually put a, a little tab, which I get from Mormino.com as well. This cute, the cutest um, labels. But in this case, I'm not gonna put one because this is for me and I, and I use my labels for the stuff that I sell to keep that to customers <clears throat> and that's it you put this to the inside I'm trying to press it down on my pocket this is done we're gonna put the strap which I completed before I'm, I didn't record my strap on camera I can actually record because I want to add another strap to this. I made this one that matches my lining. And this came out so cute. So, so cute. Let me just put this down. Again, I'm, I'm, I'm a fan of that, you know, big, big strap. And that's it, that's the finished bag. I start flapping there, that's the top stitching. That's the inside. And as you can see on that back, it has that little slip pocket concealed. 
um, I think it's cute. I think it turned out super cute. Again, I think maybe next one I might just round up the flap a little bit, maybe a round flap or actually do take the two snaps. I think with two snaps, it will look even better because I think this tends to kind of lift because it's a short flap. But you can do a long uh, flap. I just didn't want to cover this. I just didn't want to cover this. I kind of like this a lot. That's a design feature. Uh, with a longer flap, you're gonna be concealing that, and I didn't want to, so that's why I came out with that. I mean, everything can be done. Everything can be done, so go for it. Go for it and play. But this is it. I like that little peeking of my lining in there. It's cute. And I love how the back looks. I love everything. I'm going to record the alternate strap that I had that I think it will look so cute as well with this bag. And then I'll come back. So this is the bag with the contrasting strap. Which I think it goes well because it has that. It matches well with that gunmetal finish of the hardware. Which is really nice. But you can use a contrasting strap. Or you can use a matching strap that matches the inside or either the outside of the bag. So that's kind of kind of neat, kind of cute. That's it. This is the whole project done. And this is again the one with more me know by sincerely Jen patterns. And it was a blast to make.